Hey guys, welcome back to the GoGo -Go channel. Today I am going to do a DIY and it is inspired by Beth from B. Jones Style. So she, about six or eight months ago, was doing a Come Thrift With Me video and I fell in love with the top that she had on. It was like a three-tiered kind of tube top in like a blue and white gingham. If you watch her and you remember that top, let me know because I became obsessed with trying to find that top. The thing is, in her video, she mentioned that she thrifted it. So I knew it was going to be kind of challenging, but I didn't know how challenging. Like, I can't find a top like that anywhere. So basically, I kept thinking about it. And when I started thinking about it, I'm like, you know, it's really not that complicated. I might be able to make that. I could probably make that. So then I started thinking like, if I was going to make it, what kind of fabric would I want to use? So I just kept my eye open when I was thrifting and um, uh, probably about four months ago, I would say, I found this. I'll put a picture of it right here because I've already cut it up and so I can't show you the whole thing. But anyway, it's basically a 1970s flat, no, fitted, sorry, fitted sheet from a twin bed and it's like a teal and kind of a pea green stripe. And the funny thing is, I remember, I think we had sheets like this when I was little. I think they were in my brother's room. If they weren't these, they were something very similar. But I love the colors. Those colors I've always been obsessed with. And the funny, other funny thing is, when my daughter was little, she had this shirt that was, it was made out of like a terry cloth, like actual towel kind of velour terry cloth material. And it was striped and it had those colors in it. And she wore it all the time. She loved it. And she called it her pickle shirt because it reminded her of the colors of a pickle kind of in a way. So we started calling it the pickle shirt all the time. And when I saw the sheet, it made me think of that shirt. So I thought it would be really fun to make something for her out of it. So that's the original thing I bought it for. And then I started thinking about it and I'm like, those stripes would be so cool vertically in the different layers of the ruffles. Um, and I started looking and really the sheet was big enough that I was able to make a shirt for her and a shirt for me. So I made two of them and they turned out so cute. So what I started with was just mapping it out. I just kind of drew out my plan. This is the way the shirt looks. And then I drew out all the different layers and how long they would have to be depending upon how far I was going to gather them in. So my plan was to have the main length of the shirt be the first longest layer. And it wouldn't have to be as wide because it's going to be very close to fitting my body with just a little bit of gather at the top. And then these two upper tiers I wanted to be super gathered so they're longer and shorter obviously and then I needed a band for the top so I'm going to show you the footage of me creating the shirt now and then um, at the end I will try it on so the first thing I did when starting off was just to cut the elastic off of the fitted sheet because I wanted to make sure it was flat as possible so I didn't waste any fabric and it was easy to cut my pieces out Next, I carefully marked off all the pieces on the sheet with a sewing pencil and made sure to keep them really close together because I wanted to preserve as much of the extra fabric as I could. And then once I had all the pieces marked, I went ahead and cut them out. Now that the pieces are all cut out, here they are laid out all together. This is for both tops. And my next step will be to take the main ruffle 
and go ahead and sew those pieces together so I have one long piece and then I'm going to make the gathering stitch on the top. And now I'm back from the sewing machine and ready to gather. When you're gathering, you want to make sure you're really careful along the way so you don't pull your thread too hard because um, it can snap. I actually had that happen in this process, so I think I show that coming up and just kind of show you what I do to make up for that so you don't have to take it all out and start completely over. Okay, so I just sewed all those pieces except for this uh, bottom band of the second top. And uh, I s had something go wrong. And I wanted to bring it down here before I ripped it out and fixed it, just so I could show you guys in case this ever happens to you because I've had this happen quite often and it's hard to explain because it doesn't make any sense why it happens, it just does. But sometimes, when you're doing a gather stitch or any stitch really, your machine will just go crazy. Okay, so you can see that the gathering stitch was working fine. And then all of a sudden, my machine did a little noise and then did this insanity. So what I'm gonna do is, cause my gather stitch, I was almost to the end. If you can see, I was like so close. So. Um, what I'm going to do is rip out this, this hot mess and I'm going to leave everything up to here. I do have a little bit of a tail. I managed to make a little bit of a tail here that I can pull and, and gather. Um, then what I usually do when this happens is I will start another gather stitch back a little ways because if you do it after it, you're going to have a flat part that has no gather. So I'm gonna go back a little ways and go below it just a little bit. And then start from there and finish it off with a different gather stitch. That way you can pull them both and they'll kind of overlap and you won't have the problem with um, having a blank area where there is no stitch. So that is just something I wanted to show you guys really quickly because I've had this happen a lot to me where I had to come up with my own way of fixing it because it it happens so if that happens to you that's what you can do to fix it all right so i'm gonna go back up and fix this and then we can continue so as you can see the gathering worked out perfectly even though we had to kind of repair it there so the next step will be to put the layers of the smaller ruffles on top so they're going to go right on top of the middle the bottom layer that's longer and I almost forgot to mention before you start pinning, make sure that you turn all your pieces right side out so that your seams are on the inside. I'm starting out by pinning the top layer first so I can use that as a guide to do the middle layer just because it makes it easier to make sure you make it even. And now that the top layer is on, I'm going ahead and pinning the middle one going underneath the top one just a little bit. And I'm using that top layer as my guide just so I make sure it is even. And now I can take it up to the sewing machine and sew those two top layers. And just like that, I am back from the machine. I have the two ruffles sewn on and I'm tossing that aside. It's time to work on the band that goes on the top. This is the band that will hold the elastic in 
and it will keep it tight on your chest so it doesn't fall down. In order to make this really easy to pin onto the top, I'm going ahead and, and ironing it flat. Then I'm folding in the two edges where the seams are, where the edges are, where the raw edges are. And then I'm going to also fold it in half and press it. So this will just make it really easy. I tried to do it without doing that and it was hard to get the fabric to stay straight. So this is just going to make it really easy for me to sew this all flat, nice and sharp first. And then it'll just be really quick to pin it on. Okay, and now I'm just going ahead and pinning on the band on top. I will pin it all the way around, but I am going to leave a space like everyone usually talks about, how you leave a space for the elastic so I can slide that in. Again, like magic, I'm back from the machine and the band is all sewn onto the top. But then I noticed that my layers didn't look super even and I felt like they were kind of long. So I'm going to go ahead and trim those a little bit just so they're a little bit shorter before I finish off the bottoms. Okay, so now I feel much better about them. I feel like they look a lot more even. Um, and I am just showing you kind of up close. If you can see, I was really meticulous about making sure that the stripes matched all the way through. So um, it's just kind of, you know, one of those things that you do when you do your uh, DIYs that you can go that extra step that fast fashion doesn't have time to do. So I went up and I zigzagged the bottom of all the ruffles so they are finished now and they won't fray. And then the last step is going to be to put in the elastic. Once I get to the end, I safety pin my two ends together just so they don't fall back inside before I get up to that machine. And then I'm just going to zigzag stitch over the elastic and put it inside and sew the top. And there you go. Voila, it is done and I think it turned out really cool. So here it is. Super cute, I love it so much. It was super easy to make, and I encourage you guys to try it. It was pretty fun. It didn't really take as much material as I thought it would because I was able to get two shirts, and I still have tons of the sheet left over so I can make other stuff. I think I'm gonna make some masks with it maybe, or some scrunchies. I think scrunchies would be really cute. If you decide to try it, well, let me know below. And if you like this, please hit like below, and make sure you hit subscribe because we're gonna be doing more DIYs coming up and I will see you soon. Bye.